um, I am Mrs. Moon, Brian and Moon's mom, and that's Comet. Say hi, Comet. Hi. <laughs> and we're going to read A House is a House for Me by Mary Ann Haverman and illustrated by Betty Frazier. And the reason why I picked this book is it's got good language and really cool illustrations. So every time we read this book, we find something new in the illustrations. So that's fun. All right. Let's see if we can get my little hands to do this. Okay, house is a house for me. See how the letters are illustrated pictures? That's kind of cool, huh? There's a pumpkin. We just finished Halloween. Okay. A hill is a house for an ant, an ant. A hive is a house for a bee. A hole is a house for a mole or a mouse. And a house is a house for me. A web is a house for a spider and a bird builds its nest in a tree. There's nothing so snug as a bug and a rug and a house is a house for me. that's a house for a chicken. A sty, that's a house for a sow. A fold, that's where all the sheep gather, gather to sleep. A barn, that's a house for a cow. It's also, of course, a house for a horse. A kennel's a house for a dog, a dog. A dog is a house for a flea. But when the dog strays, the flea sometimes stays and then it may move on to me. Houses for rabbits are hutches. A house for a mole is a shed, or a house for a mule is a shed. But a house is a house for me. Okay, there was a page that was torn out of this book, so it doesn't flow as well in that page. But look at the illustrations. They're so pretty. They're very cool. Okay, anyway. Okay, a shell is a dwelling for shellfish for oysters and lobsters and clams. Each snail has a shell, each turtle as well, but not any lions or lambs. Lions live out in the open. Monkeys live up in a tree. Hippos live down in a river. Now what do you know about me? An igloo is a house for an Eskimo. A teepee is a house for a Cree. A Pueblo is a house for a Hopi, and a wigwam may hold a Mohi. A garage is a house for a car or a truck. A hangar is a house for a plane. A dock or a slip is a house for a ship, and a terminal is a house for a train. A husk is a house for a corn ear. A pod is a place for a pea. A nut shells, a hut for a hickory nut. But what is a shelter for me? You see, they built a little fort underneath the table. A glove is a house for a hand. A hand, a stocking, is a house for a knee. A shoe or a boot is a house for a foot. And a house is a house for me. She's building a tunnel in the snow. A box is a house for a tea bag. A tea pot's a house for some tea. If you pour me a cup and I drink it all up, then the tea house will turn into me. Cartons are houses for crackers and castles are houses for kings. The more that I think about houses, the more things are houses for things. And if you get started in thinking, I think you will find that it's true that the more that you think about houses for things, the more things are houses for you. Barrels are houses for pickles, and bottles are houses for jam. A pot is a spot for potatoes, and a sandwich is home for some ham. A cookie jar, or the cookie heart jar is home to the cookies. The bread box is home to the bread. My coat is a house for a body. My hat is a house for my head. 
Perhaps I have started far-fetching. Perhaps I am stretching things some. A mirror is house for reflections. My throat is a house for a hum. But once you get started in thinking, you think and you think and you think. How pockets are houses for pennies, and pens can be houses for ink. How peach pits are houses for peach, or how peaches are houses for peach pits, and sometimes houses for worms. How trash cans are houses for garbage, and garbage make houses for germs. And envelopes, earmuffs, and eggshells, bathrobes, baskets, and bins, and rag bags, rubbers, and roasters, and tablecloths, toasters, and tins. And once you get started in thinking, it seems that whatever you see is either a house or it lives in the house, and a house is a house for me. Okay, now I can turn this thing here. There we go. A book is a house for a story. A rose is a house for a smell. My head is a house for a secret, a secret I will never tell. A flower's at home in a garden. A donkey's at home in a stall. Each creature that's known has a house of its own. Look at that illustration, that's beautiful. And the earth is a house for us all. So thanks for listening. And I hope you like the language, the way it rhymes or sounds together um, in the sentences uh, because I love that book. It's really a special book. So goodbye, Miss Hatton Ellis's class. See you later.